Please be seated. Yes, Mr. Karzic. Thank you, Your Excellency. We visited Croatia for a while because it was the OTP who introduced Croatia. I have nothing against that because it involves one people and one single crisis. Let me just remind you a little uh, how this whole picture was created started from the beginning. In 1990, the League of Communists started to disintegrate because they failed to conclude their 14th convention. They disintegrated into uh, ethnic and nationalist leagues of communists of various republics. At that point, Karadzic had been a dissident since 1968. I was living with my family, I had my friends, and I was working, and I didn't believe that the communists will ever uh, leave power. However, that is what happened, and a multi-party system uh, was created. On the 27th of March 1990, a group of young Muslims known for having served lengthy prison sentences in various trials announced that they were going to form a Muslim party with Muslim objectives. This didn't concern the Serbs because in their program they said that they don't not uh, will talk even to the parties who uh, were not favoring Yugoslavia. However, very soon thereafter, graffiti uh, targeting Serbs were seen on the buildings, and this party was created, and their enemies were going to be uh, the JNA and the Serbs. On the 15th of May, 1990, the Forum for the Protection of Individual and Traditional Rights of Muslims was established. Uh, the Croatian elections took place on the 22nd of April. Uh, the HDZ, which was the most powerful party, had very successfully assimilated uh, the Ustasha uh, policies, and they won the elections. So all of this was happening in that period. And then on the 26th of May, the Party of Democratic Action had its founding, uh, founding assembly. It had been announced on the 27th of March. The Serbs at that period uh, do not even have any plans for setting up their own party. We said that this founding uh, assembly, Dalibor Brozovic said that Croatia was going to be defended on the River Drina, although nobody had attacked it, and that was only a month after the elections in Croatia. It was only on the 28th of June that the Serbs in Sarajevo and Bosnia, a strong community, renewed the operation of the cultural society called Prosvieta that had been banned both during the World War II and immediately after the World War II. And unfortunately, I have to say that when it came to the Serbian questions, the communists very often were acting in unison with the Ostasha and the German Nazis. They shared opinions on that issue. It, the Serbian Democratic Party was formed on the 12th of Jul July by the Serbian intellectual and political elite under the pressure of uh, the people because they didn't know who to vote for. 
the HDZ already spilled over into the Bos into Bosnia. They were seeing the banners of the HDZ and SDA be tied together in rallies, whereas the Serbs had nothing. Therefore, the Serbian intelligentsia was asked to establish the Serbian Democratic Party. Izetbegovic came to the rally, greeted us, and he said that he had expected this to happen sooner. Somebody from the audience asked him what were his views about Yugoslavia, and he said, I'm in favor of a reasonable federation. And by that, Izetbegovic laid down the foundations for our a coalition, possible coalition, by convincing us that there were no major differences between our political platforms. The prosecution omitted, although they were searching for the elements of Messeria and uh, the characters of those involved the main players of the Serbian Democratic Party, but they omitted to say who founded the Serbian Democratic Party, whether those were extremists, losers, scum, or were they university professors, authors of many books, scientists, etc., who subsequently, by living for four years on the mountains and in uh, deserted lands became a party that had so many intellectuals amongst in, it, its ranks like no other party in Europe. They could boast very high level of expertise and knowledge, and they led a very small community in very hard times. This does not suit the prosecution, and that is why they disregarded this. Uh, in their search for Mensra, uh, Mr. Tiger went back into the past uh, as far as Tsar Dushan. He claims that I wanted to have what Tsar Dushan had, and that was the ethnic clean state. The Serbian state during his reign in the 14th century was a multi-ethnic state, incorporating Serbs, Albanians, and other ethnic communities. Even today, Serbia has probably the largest number of various ethnic communities. They haven't been assimilated, and their identity is being protected and preserved. Therefore, you cannot take Tsar Dushan as an example for an ethnically clean state. Uh, when the crisis was on the horizon and disintegration was on the horizon, this accused proposed the so-called Scandinavization. Uh, he realized that Bosnia would be uh, in the forefront of all these processes. Uh, the countries of Scandinavia in 1905 agreed to part peacefully. They had six months to decide in which country they wanted to live, and even today all these countries live happily in prosperity next to, in, uh, uh, to uh, one another. This accused was against the uh, split up of Bosnia and Herzegovina. However, when the secession started, he was in favor of turning Bosnia into a country made according to the model of southern Switzerland. It would be divided into cantons. And it was only important for everyone to do their job and administer the country without any internal clashes and permanent attempts to dominate. I have to say that the issue of cantonization was 
for the first time mentioned in a newspaper in Zagreb, but we accepted it immediately as a very uh, good solution uh, for save, saving Bosnia. While searching for Mens Rea and the intentions of the Serbian Democratic Party, and when the OTP wants to prove that the SDS was, in fact, formed in order to uh, start the war and form a Serbian state and expel others in the process, They do not invoke anything else other than things that happened only according to the logic of a civil war. Just like other nationalist parties, the SDS won around 98% of votes. This implied a huge responsibility. We won that on a democratic program, and the prosecution was unable to show a single element of our responsibility that would have been instrumental in creating the events that followed. They couldn't find a single such thing, a single such cause in our documents. The OTP should not uh, look what a deputy said, uh, if angered or something like that. They should just focus on the party platform and program. We divided power in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we created a coalition that was possible at the time. The Serbian Democratic Party, on behalf of the Serbian people that it represented, accepted the post of the speaker. This is not in the executive branch. The Muslims had the president of the presidency, and the Croats had the prime minister. Although they only constituted 17 percent, but that didn't matter. We didn't seek uh, neither the Ministry of the Interior nor the Ministry of Defense. So the Serbs wanted to be allocated the Ministry of Agriculture because well, if you look at the map, these blue areas are the areas where the Serbs constitute majority nowadays, and that was the case before the war as well. That is why we were uh, looking for the Ministry of Agriculture. I would like to remind the chamber and the prosecution of the fact that one cannot say that this people, who have been a constituent people in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and that you cannot circumvent them when um, t making serious decisions. Even when there are conditions for a democratic decision, these people have to swallow that and to uh, accept the dictate of the other two parties. That was not an option for us. We uh, got to the Ministry of Science and the Ministry of Information. In short, there was not a single ministry in our hands that would serve war efforts. Immediately after the elections, this accused, due to tensions, made a proposal for creating an expert government. Those were people who had been dissidents for a long time, and they were not popular among uh, the communists for that. We proposed that the party people should not be in the government, but rather people who are professionals. The other two parties didn't accept that, but the, the SDS stood by its position. Interpreters note, the accused is kindly asked to slow down for the benefit of the interpreters and the record. 
kako tužilaštvo može da So how is it possible for the prosecution to overlook these efforts on the part of the Serbian Democratic Party and how can the intentions to wage war that Uh, go back to the 12th of July, how can they reconcile that with the fact that they had the ministries in their hands that I mentioned they had and that they were willing to give power to professionals? This is probably a trap that the prosecution fell into due to their uh, lack of knowledge of the language. On the eve of the war and the most serious crisis, When we got the right to have our constituent unit, to have the police, the National Guard, and the government, the words of this accused were, this is what we agreed, go out into the field, take power into your hands, and act responsibly. This is being translated by the OTP, take over. And one of the main things in this indictment is the claim that the Serbs took over power in municipalities. But, Excellencies, if you look at this map, there was no need for the Serbs to take over power, but just to administer power that they won in the elections. Why would they take it over? From whom? They were already in power there. And you can see that from this map. Why would we take over power from someone in Bielina? And Bielina features here as a municipality that was taken over by force. But this uh, lack of knowledge of language, when you take over something that used to belong to you, but if you take something, you're taking somebody else's possession. So this is a drastic difference between these two terms, and this is why it was incorporated in the indictment. Tosu. Vidite, recimo, ne samo da nismo uzeli ministarstvo. Not only didn't we take the ministry of the interior, but we didn't even have our own people at any of the lower levels in that ministry. All the people who were there had already been in the police. We didn't bring any criminals. I will draw your attention uh, to the intercept of the conversation between the accused and the deputy minister. Gde se dobija potvrda? Which is a confirmation that this deputy minister was not a member of the SDS. I want to ask them, uh, it is in the interest of the Muslim people to appoint only criminals at the MUP. Karadžić Vito, we haven't appointed a single criminal, Zepinic, yes, but I'm talking about that, Karadžić. Look, please, we have nothing to be ashamed of. We have brought a single man who hadn't already been at the MUP. Their interest is to appoint people, these honest people, nothing to do with the party. Zepinic, I'm going to send an open letter to the SDA and its president asks them whether it's in the interest of the Muslim people to appoint only criminals. Karadžić, we asked who was the most honest and the most competent, and we appointed them. And mind you, now we are in a dead end street. They were appointed the most loyal people. We were appointed the most competent people. So that was this, this difference in approach of the SDA and the Serb community and this core of the fundamentalist uh, SDA party, uh, SDS the difference in moral approach. And this led to the fact that the police in Bosnia-Herzegovina started to massively abuse their state authority against the Serb people and for the SDA. The gentleman talking to me was appointed as deputy minister in the Serb place. He wasn't a member of the 
SDA. We didn't do things like that, but they changed the entire picture of the police force. They brought in criminals and they started to arm the people and to arm the Party of Democratic Action and the Patriotic League as well, which was uh, formed very early on, the 31st of March, two months after the joint government had been set up. So. Uh, this is proof and evidence uh, that we get from this uh, intercept that the number two man in the MOOC confirms that, yes, they were bringing in criminals, we were not, and that we uh, still maintain that professionals should be used, honest professionals, and not party people in the distribution of power and authority and political posts. Now, it would be very useful if we were to see and look at what Mr. Izetbegovic says under these circumstances, faced with this situation. On the 27th of February to the 15th of January, he was in favor of Yugoslavia. However, on the 27th of February of that same year, just one a month after the coalition government was formed, Izetbegovic says that he will give up peace for Bosnia's independence and sovereignty, but he would not be ready to sacrifice sovereign Bosnia for peace. So it is his resolve to go to the very end, regardless of whether he has the right to do so, whether he is right or not, and whether the people living on two-thirds of the territory of Bosnia-Herzegovina, well, there's one-third of the population there who were Serbs, uh, because genocide reduced that group of pop the population. And now Muslims and Croats were exploiting the results of the genocide against the Serbs. They want to reap their own benefit, because uh, now they're saying, there's no more than a third of you, but we can see where they were the majority when they were in the majority. They were the majority on two thirds uh, in two thirds of Bosnia, two thirds of Bosnian territory, and they were reduced because of the genocide during World War II. Otherwise, they were always the majority population before. Now, who are these people with whom we entered into a co coalition government and who conditioned our behavior fully? We're going to see that. Let's see what the leading ideology was of this group of people. Uh, since the prosecution is seeking uh, mens rea for all of us, let's see who we were dealing with. Were they docile lambs, or were we up against something to which we had to react and react in the way we did? Mr. Zetbegovic, in 1970, for example, published, or rather wrote and distributed secretly, clandestinely, the Islamic Declaration. Mr. Zetbegovic, in 1941, 2, and 3, was a member of the Young Muslims Organization. And at the time, he opted for the introduction of a fundamentalist Islamic regime everywhere on territory inhabited by the Muslims. And the basis and foundations of that program was the Islamic de Declaration, which he wrote in 1970. Now, after the war, after World War II, he continued to uh, propagate clandestinely and subversively, and he was sentenced to three years' imprisonment after World War II. After he left prison, uh, he was one of the individuals that you should take your hat off to, actually, because of his perseverance and uh, because he didn't want to give way. He wanted to stick to his program, and he never changed on that score. During World War II, uh, the brothers Behmed uh, took in this man who's on the picture there with uh, Hitler. He's the uh, Mufti Husseini who was in Sarajevo several times, at least twice, in fact, and he went to see Hitler umpteen times. And every time he came to Bosnia, this resulted in the uh, establishment of the Waffen-SS division, which was called the Hanja Sword Division, which was the most brutal decision. You couldn't even imagine how brutal they were and the brutalities they committed. It was the most brutal unit ever. 
So that was Hitler's friend, as you could see, and a guest with Beckman and Izetbegovic. Therefore, after the war, Mr. Izetbegovic, as I said, was in prison. He was given a prison sentence. And in 1970, he wrote the Islamic Declaration, which is, in fact, the program of the Party of Democratic Action, of course. We hoped that it wasn't what it was, but it proved to be exactly what we uh, what it was. Be and I sought ways and means in 1990 to save Bosnia, and I wanted this Begovic to give up on the Islamic Declaration and tell us that it wasn't the political program of the SDA. We ne he never gave us those assurances. He remained firm. Uh, not only has the prosecution not sought to find who our partners were uh, that conditioned our behavior, but erroneously interprets our words and says, when I'm speaking at a meeting, I think it was an assembly session or a party meeting, said that we cannot control the Muslims in such a unitary state. We know very well what, when fundamentalism turns up that we cannot live together. There's no tolerance anymore. Now, what's this all about? What has the prosecution done here? It uh, cut off part of my speech and made this sentence stand alone and failed to uh, print the main sentence. And this is something that uh, is often done. But actually, what it was was that the West, and it proved to be true, did not allow Republika Srpska to be established or the Serbs to remain in Yugoslavia, perhaps because it did not want to enable the Muslims to be an express majority, a majority and to form an Islamic state in Europe. The thesis is that the Serbs and Croats should remain in Bosnia to control the Islamic factor to the advantage of Europe as a tool for Europe. And Radovan Karadzic says that's not a good thing. The Serbs will not allow uh, the, um, the uh, Karadzic won't allow the Serbs to be used as a controlling factor of the Islamic uh, group. And also, it would be a much more peace-loving if the Serbs would uh, get away uh, from this fundamentalist uh, project rather than having them oppose it. Why should the Serbs once again stand at the gates uh, of the uh, stand at uh, Europe's gates and preserve Europe and protect it? So here, what the prosecution is trying to do is to say that we, in fact, wish to control the Mos Muslims, whereas we're stating quite the reverse. We say we don't want to do that. We don't want to lay down our lives for that. Uh, similarly, another assembly deputy says that we were uh, set to be the executioners of the Muslims in Bosnia. And we said we don't want to do that. But what the prosecution says is that that is precisely what we chose to do, to be the executioners. Then he went on to say an institution 700 years old, probably thinking about the Vatican, has set us the role of being executioners, whereas we refuse to be the executioners. And this is being reversed by the uh, prosecutor. So if it wasn't a case of uh, this word executioners being used, there wouldn't have been an indictment. You have to read what the man actually said. It's not that we chose to be executioners. They thought that we could perform the function of executioners but we refuse to play that role. Furthermore, the prosecution in paragraph 23 of their pretrial grief states that uh, uh, without foundation, I told our people that we face the same plans, the same villains, and the same victims as in World War II, and that I insisted that the Mis Muslims sought an Islamic state and were preparing laws to subjugate Serbs and that Serbs were unwilling to go back to slavery. slavery. And what if that's true? And that is something that the prosecution should have established. The prosecution's position is that this wasn't true, but we will prove that it is true. Why waste time and money by holding trials of this kind? 
Had an investigating magistrate uh, been in charge of this, he would have concluded Karadzic was right, the prosecution was wrong, because there's too much evidence and proof to show that that is so. But let's see whether it is true and uh, what the situation is. Mr. Zidbegovic was the creator of an organization which has been in existence for 50 years, that is, since 1939 onwards, which uh, had an oath of this kind. It says, I will f sacrifice everything on God's path, including my life, if the interests of re Islam require that. I will fight un uncompromisingly against everything non-Islamic. I will sacrifice everything on God's path, including my life, if the interests of Islam require that. I will also fight for the grandeur and fame of Islam. So may God give me the power to do that on the road of jihad. Yes, I'm being told to slow down, so I have to do so. So this is the oath, the oath taken by the Muslim youth. Now let's look at and see what Mr. Zedbegovic says in his Islamic declaration. What are Islam's tasks or the tasks of Muslims? Uh, the Muslims must be a movement. And that movement can take over power and authority as soon as it is morally and otherwise uh, strong enough to topple not only um, the powers that be, but to build up an Islamic uh, government. So they don't have to wait 50 percent, because waiting 50 percent means waiting for democracy of some kind, with some kind of voting. But as soon as what he's saying is as soon as they feel strong enough, they are duty bound to topple everything non-Islamic. After he came out of prison for the first time, Mr. Zedbegovic wrote this Islamic declaration and became a member of uh, some important institutions. That's something that the prosecution doesn't know about, but the political committee in the U.S. Senate does, the U.S. Senate Republican Policy Committee. The whole world knows about that. However, the uh, prosecutor is trying to make me out to be a barbarian attacking a good neighbor, a good and peaceful pay neighbor. This is what the U.S. Senate Republican Policy Committee says, uh, what it said in 1998, uh, about what Mr. Zedbegovic said in 1983. He said that he uh, uh, strengthened uh, efforts uh, after 1978 to establish Islamic power in Bosnia and was jailed by the communists in 1983. Uh, there were 65 witnesses appearing before uh, judge, five judges, all of them Muslims. Now, the judgment uh, for Ali Zabedin and Omer Bekman Hassan Cengic, they were all alive and active in 1990. The judgment and sentence says that they were taken over by the idea of Islamization and the Islamic revival, and that this began in 1974, that is to say, the year of the promotion of the new Yugoslav constitution, which laid the foundations for the breakup of Yugoslavia in the first place, uh, and that they had accepted the Islamic revolution as being their own, Iranian uh, revolution. He says he refers to this as the Islamic population, that, that conditions should be created for Bosnia to become an Islamic republic with Islamic laws. And that would refer to everybody living in Bosnia. And he says the imams in Bosnia should be armed just like the Iranian Shiite imams in Iran. Now, in that same year, that is to say, already in 1982, Izetbegovic identifies the Serbs as the enemies. There's no Karadzic, there's no Milosevic on the scene, there's no memorandum by the Serbian Academy of Arts and Sciences, none of that. And all the apparatuses that the prosecution uh, 
is aiming against the Serbs and takes to be uh, the, um, to prove that the Serbs are the uh, culprits. Kosovo and uh, Vojvodina were provinces of Serbia. It was the only republic uh, that was not able to resolve its problems. And thanks to a Macedonian, Lazar Koliszewski, we uncovered what was afoot. It was a uh, the communist slogan was a weak Serbia will make a strong Yugoslavia. The weaker the Serbia, the stronger Yugoslavia. Well, that weak Serbia in 1982, according to Izet Begovic, was the enemy. It was the foe, his associate Ahmed Beckman, uh, with whom he cooperated during World War II as well, and in whose house the Mufti stayed when he visited the Husseini uh, Muftias of uh, Jerusalem, uh, he said that um, there was pressure being exerted on Muslims. And the other man, or the third man, Cengic, says that a Muslim could not uh, feed uh, a Serb child. Uh, a Serb child. Uh, Mr. Cengic at the time, because Karadzic isn't there yet, we're dealing with 1984 and 1983, no SDS. So he says what the goal of their revo uh, revolution is, the revolution that they were preparing. So if you uh, envisage the map of Yugoslavia, Bosnia, near Sanja, Kosovo, we call it the green transversal over there, you know. Now, the prosecutor doesn't agree with that. He considers that we shouldn't even, uh, it should never enter our heads. Now, uh, the minister of Turkey comes and says that he's going to reinstate that green transversal. And in 1990, uh, Turgut Tozal, the president, said that Turkey would stretch from the Adriatic to the Great Wall of China. Well, yes, maybe, but without the Serbs because we're not going to take part in that kind of empire. So here we have the green transversal plotted by a mighty man who is a clergyman as well. Yes, a clergyman. And the American clergyman who publicly um, was sorry that um, Changit wasn't killed on time seems to be a lamb compared to this one. And he says, you don't need a pretext for that. And then in another place, he says, you should make a pretext. So we saw Markale, for example, and the other pretexts that were created and fabricated. And then, based on that, they behaved towards the Serbs as if, they were, as if it was the Serbs to blame. Now, I wasn't uh, surprised to see them doing it, but why is the prosecution following suit? And why is it asking this uh, tribunal and the trial chamber to do the same, to accept uh, war trickery and cunning? There was a second instance of Markale later on. They were technically better prepared, but the same technology was used and for the same reasons. And this is an image of Izet Begovic's trial in 1983. The second man is Beckman. I don't remember who the others were, but it's the Izet Begovic et al. trial. Now, we see that the plans are the same, uh, the victims are the same, and the perpetrators are say the same, just as they were in World War II. The prosecutor, and the prosecutor, however, considers otherwise. And this is what the judgment states, the judgment in 1983, the uh, Chamber of Five, all Muslims, 62 Muslim witnesses, says, in our circumstances, advocating such an ideology would mean returning to the state of civil war. It is indisputable that such an ideology cannot be implemented in a community which is religiously and politically so profoundly mixed. A little slower, please. Thank you. It's on the screen. That's why I'm hurrying. a community which is religiously and politically so profoundly mixed that the dominance or complete supremacy of any of the existing national entities is simply inconceivable unless based on terror or possibly foreign intervention. Slow down further, please. Pogledajmo, Excellency. Your Excellencies, let's look at this, and I'd like the prosecution to look at it too. 
take a look at this. Now, seven years after this, after this judgment, we see the realization and implementation of that very ideology, but not with terror or foreign intervention, but both terror and foreign intervention. And the uh, trial chamber and the judges here were very far-sighted because it was terror and calls for foreign intervention. Markale were calls for foreign intervention. It was montage and fabrication, the butchery of our own people. And you will see that in the program they have that too, the butchery of one's own people. That is written down. You'll come to see that when we look at the program. And now the prosecutor, in addition to everything that it's at, is at its disposal, says that Karajis insisted on as much separation as possible. Well, if our neighbors are preparing a program of this kind and life of this kind, of course we're going to separate from them. We don't believe that that's what the Muslim masses wanted. So it wasn't Izid Begovic, but Avdic who won the elections. The Muslims cried out to the Muslims and Serbs. They applauded them when there was this historical agreement in the offing in 1991 until Izid Begovic withdrew it. They were all very happy and applauded because the Serbs and Muslims managed to reach an agreement. Agreement. However, that group chose to manipulate the SDA and the entire Muslim community. Now let us have a look at what things would be like if we were to write a genuine indictment and if we were just to change the names. Is it Begovic ins insisted on the secession of all of Bosnia, despite Bosnia's ethnically intermingled character, this meant making Serbs a national minority in his Islamic Republic and taking them out of the country. That is to say that if Muslims and Serbs are intermingled in Republika Srpska, then Republika Srpska cannot be established. But if the Serbs are intermingled with Muslims in all of Bosnia, then it can happen. It seems that Muslims are more intermingled than Serbs and all in the same place. However, they somehow manage to intermingle more. You will see how figures are dealt with in very relative terms. As the learned Mr. Teeger says, uh, who likes cursory glances, he says, let's cast a cursory glance at this map. What about the Serbs in Bosnia? I mean, when I say the Serbs own land, they own land in terms of private ownership, but Serbs are a majority population in this area, and they have the right to say once they had attained the right to statehood and lived in Yugoslavia, they have the right to say whether they are willing to accept uh, interventions of this kind, foreign interventions, ideologies that hurt both Muslims and Serbs a great deal. Does the prosecution approve, say, the prosecution says 30 percent? Now, do they approve, or actually, have a look at it. This is what it would look like. We insisted upon separating from them, but let us look at it this way. Is it Begovic insisted on secession of all of Bosnia, despite Bosnia's ethnically intermingled character? It would mean that he can take a million and a half Serbs out, and the prosecution says that we sought the territories of Republika Srpska, where there were hundreds of thousands of Muslims and Croats. They seem to be more than a million and a half Serbs for the prosecution. That's something that we don't understand. Except that these Muslims and Croats who would stay in Republika Srpska, they wouldn't leave their own state. They would just live in a different entity, but within their own country. <laughs> Uh, again, this was abused. We cannot control the Muslims, etc., etc. That 
sentence has been brutalized, butchered. It is not for the judges to carry out investigations, but all of this was abused. They just took parts of this sentence, cut it up. There are three sources, three major sources uh, of population, population growth rates, and that is not only the birth rate. First of all, the promoted migration of Muslims from Sanjuk. Secondly, Muslims who had, re who had moved to Turkey a generation before that were being returned. And then also the Muslim belief that a Muslim woman should have five children so that one could be sacrificed for Bosnia. We are against that kind of birth rate, yes. And when the prosecution says that I said that we would not allow them to make settlements in Republika Srpska, I am saying to them what I'm saying to Mr. Izetbegovic. I said, Mr. Izetbegovic, I know what your plan is, that you want to bring in Muslims from Sanjak and Turks from Turkey. However, don't fool yourselves that we are going to allow you to make these settlements in Serb areas. Protestants or Catholics in Northern Ireland would not allow that either. To have a conscious effort made by way of political action in order to disrupt the ethnical balance, that is a crime. We are not going to allow that to happen. That's what I said before our assembly or wherever at some meeting. So I was just interpreting what I had said to Izzet Begovic. I had said that to them, and he was just blinking, and he said, I understand. Now, let us see what this Islamic declaration is. This is a program text, regardless of whether the communists were in power or not. Nothing has changed whatsoever. It says, we announce to our friends and foes alike that Muslims are determined to take the fate of the Islamic world into their own hands. And we are going to set up a world in accordance with our own precepts. The struggle already knows of its shaheeds. These are the holy warriors that die in such wars. Martyrs. They're martyrs, actually. A shahid is a martyr. A Muslim can die only with the name of Allah on his lips and for the glory of Islam or escape from the battlefield. Let me stop at this point for a moment and say that we are going to bring proof of this. Mr. Izebegovic saying to his associates, for tactical reasons, we say that our soldiers are laying their lives for a multi-ethnic Bosnia. But let us not fool ourselves. They are not dying for a multi-ethnic Bosnia. That was a moment of frankness, sincerity in a narrow circle. But we have that evidence. The first most important conclusion is that the Islamic religion and non-Islamic social and political institu institutions cannot coexist. There can be neither peace nor coexistence between the Islamic religion and non-Islamic social and political institutions. Whoever wishes our community well will not try to spare a struggle, danger, and misfortune. The Islamic movement should and can start to take over power as soon as it is morally and numerically strong enough to be able to do that in their own territory. So this is not a lay state. The state should support the moral precepts of religion. Islam is the first point, and pan-Islamism is the second point. Now, please have a look at this. As we announce renewal, we are not re announcing a period of safety and peace, but of unrest and challenges. There are many things that are to be destroyed. People who are asleep can only be awakened by blows. Who wishes our community well should not spare it 
of exertions, dangers, and troubles. Islamic renewal can start without a political revolution, but it cannot be brought to a successful end without a political revolution. The movement has to take power as soon as it is strong enough, numerically strong enough, to be able to overturn not only the existing non-Islamic government, but also to build up a new Islamic one. That is what is unequivocally stated, no dilemma whatsoever. Unrest, challenges. It just looks like blood, sweat, and tears, as Churchill had put it, because it is the enemy that causes blood, sweat, and tears among Churchill's people, whereas here it is one's own government that is going to cause blood, sweat, and tears among their own people. Who wishes our community well should not spare them, should hit them, and in this way waking them up. The blow, the hit, was Markale so that the people could stand strong against the Serbs. They will try to prove that it is the Serbs who did that at Markale. And you saw how unconvincing that is. It is impossible to do that uh, with a single shell, especially kill that many people who are not there in the first place. That is what happened in 1990, and that is the moment when the renewal is being heralded and when there is going to be a period of unrest and challenges, because uh, many things are seeking their own destroyers, but we did not ask for any destroyers. These that will be destroyed and that were begging for destruction were the constitution of Bosnia-Herzegovina, secular government. There will be no compromise with secular states here. Then the JNA, the Serb people in Bosnia-Herzegovina, life and coexistence in Bosnia-Herzegovina, common roots. The Muslims speak as the same language as we do, the Serbian language. The fact that you accepted this, what you have here, that is wrong, because this is heritage of the Serb people. Australians do not speak the Australian language or an Australian language. They speak English. Then common past was destroyed, but also the common present and the common future. We didn't ask for that. They asked for that, or they thought that they had the right to do that, although no one did call upon them to do it. Now, let us see what accusations leveled at the Serbs are like. They have to cut up sentences and mutilate them, whereas here they have prepared documents they were held accountable before courts of law because of these texts that were written, and they didn't want to give up on them. They rather went to prison. The Serb Democratic Party, even before 1990, asked for a Chamber of Nations to be introduced in the Assembly of Bosnia-Herzegovina, and such a chamber would decide on important matters by way of consensus. That proposal does not correspond to a joint criminal enterprise. If that were the case, what could the Serbs do against the Muslims and the Croats? Nothing. Everybody would have the right to veto. They responded by establishing this council for uh, the equal rights of uh, peoples and nationalities. Uh, this is clumsy communist uh, language and jargon. It, it is very long and clumsy. So they would meet ad hoc. It's not a regular body. If we run into some kind of trouble, then it would meet. I mean, had that been applied, then that would be some kind of guarantee that we would not be brought into this position. But the Serb, it's not only the Serbs, but also the Muslims and the Croats who would not be brought into a difficult position to accept something that was unacceptable. In every particular case, uh, the Serbs, the Serb Democratic Party, and this accused person propose solutions that are directly contrary to what they are being charged for. This is part of the Constitution. There was this declaration on sovereignty that was stopped twice through this council, but it was never established because the SDA sabotaged 
its establishment. So it was practically as if it had never been set up. When I made that speech on the 15th of October, they simply overrode that. They said, we're not interested. Because even in March, Mr. Zebegovic said in Split, when there was a conference of the presidents of the Yugoslav republics, he said, we are going to adopt that with or without the Serbs. That is to say, either with the Serbs or against the Serbs. Please. The OTP denies us the right to political life and reciprocal measures. They even claim that we simply had to remain silent to bow to this and to agree to this sovereignty and independence that were envisaged and that destroyed our rights to such an extent. Also, the legal system, which was a backbone, as it is in any society, and that stems from the Islamic Declaration as an act of destruction, whereas the prosecution claims that we were not supposed to do anything about it. Everything that we did was a crime on our part. However, that is what was written. We had the right to challenge this. Uh, Mr. Zedbegovic says, we are completely aware that by declaring the neutrality of Bosnia-Herzegovina in relation to the war in Croatia, we may have violated certain laws, but at the moment everything is fluid. There are laws and there are laws. That is to say, there are laws that we're going to abide by if they suit us, and there are laws, on the other hand, that we are not going to observe if they benefit others. Now, that is that fluid situation that Karadzic is going to speak of, where Serbs cannot find their way in these unlawful situations. The prosecution is going to hold that against us as well. However, that was the basis for chaos in Bosnia-Herzegovina, this existence of laws and other laws. It can be done this way or that way. Let us see how Bosnia-Herzegovina could have functioned. They could not attain any kind of independence without Serb approval. They had to decide by a two-third majority. There was no two-third majority at the referendum. There would not have been a two-third majority in Parliament either, because 83 Serbs were against it, 83 Serb MPs, and they separated from the Bosnian parliament, and they established uh, the assembly of the Serb people. So there was no way for Bosnia and Herzegovina to adopt this resolution on sovereignty unless they said there are laws, and again, there are laws on the other hand. So if we, if we did not agree to act unlawfully, there is nothing that they could do. If someone were to say to us whether we as Serbs were denied our right to defense. Was our right to reciprocity taken away from us, to a response to unlawful behavior, to violations of our rights, to breaches of the Constitution? If that was not the case, then this indictment is impossible, and it should have been rejected straight away. It should be rejected now as well if we prove that we never intended to throw Muslims and Croats out of their home. We did not consider Bosnia or Republika Srpska to be our home. We thought that Yugoslavia was our home. That was what we believed, and that is what we are going to prove very soon. The values of Bosnian society that were hoping to see its destroyers, we didn't want to be any part of that. The Serbs, the Serb people in Bosnia and Herzegovina at that point in time had the explicit right according to the Constitution, but also historically viewed they had the right to be a constituent people that were forming this joint state, and they were co-owners, as it were, of this Bosnia-Herzegovina, just like the Serbs of Kraina were the co-owners of Croatia because they had entered this joint venture. 
Now, a change of the status, the constitutional legal status of Bosnia and Herzegovina, had to evolve in accordance with the law. Serbs were more than one third. If you were to take uh, into account Serbs, and about uh, one third or one quarter of them were Serbs who were in favor of the creation of a Yugoslav nation, there were more than one third of Serbs in the population, and they are sufficient not only in terms of consensus, but also through every other democratic process. They could have stopped independence. It is peoples, not administrative territories, that had the right to independence and self-determination. You know how the Serbs got into Yugoslavia? In 1918, a country was established of Serb, Croats, and Slovenes from the newly liberated territories of Austro-Hungary. There was not different republics that were established. There was one single state that was established. So the Serbs were sovereign in Ljubljana as Slovenes were in Sarajevo. Then that state asked the international community for permission to unite with Serbia. They united with Serbia. Serbs join that state as co-owners of that state. That was when it was said that peoples had the right to self-determination. President Wilson said that Serbia should be given access to the sea, and the, uh, the successors of President Wilson still owe this to Ser Serbia. He has made this pledge. So we didn't have republics joining in uh, to Yugoslavia so that they can disjoin later. And as Lord Owen said, then they drew the administrative borders that suddenly became more important than the external borders. This was done totally arbitrarily. Nobody can say on what basis these administrative borders were drawn. Tito said it doesn't matter. Now suddenly they have become more important and blood was starting to be shed because of the borders, which is always the case when you have communist borders or imperial borders. If you look at Croatia, Croatia inherited Austro-Hungaria uh, border. The Serbs from Trebinje can see the sea ashore, and but cannot have access to it. This is what Hasan Cengic, a clergyman, says about the Patriotic League formed on the 31st of March 1991. I would like the uh, prosecution to show me a single formation behind which the Serbian Democratic Party or the Serbian people stood. However, what we have here, even before the 31st of March, a unit formed in Foča by the father of this Hasan Cengic. whilst the SDS was organizing and leading its uh, phalanx from March until the beginning of the war. So this is the chart of the Patriotic League. The uh, commander-in-chief is Alia Isetbegovic, the main uh, staff uh, is led by uh, Sefer Halilovic, who was, I think, uh, acquitted here. Then you had uh, regional political staff and regional military staffs, and at the bottom, municipal political staffs and municipal military staff. Uh, this organization was v uh, very quickly manned and staffed so that in January 1994 they already had around 100,000 troops. So this is the role of the Patriotic League, of the Green Berets and other organized units that existed at the time. <laughs> Of the 
In these indictments against Serbs, the, the prosecution is mainly focused on crisis staffs. The Serbs had their crisis staffs. When there is shortage of gas, like it happened recently due to Ukrainian uh, cutting off gas supplies, you have to establish a crisis staff. The situation is totally irregular, and you need a crisis staff to deal with it. But I would like to draw your attention first to the fact that the crisis staff of the uh, Party of Democratic Action and the HDZ were present everywhere, even in the smallest village, much before the war and before the inception of the SDS. Here are some of the differences between uh, the crisis staffs of the SDA and the SDS. The SDA crisis staff had been formed well before the war, when there was no indication of the war breaking out in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, SDS staffs were public and were only formed on the eve of the war, at the time when the SDA managed to bring uh, the state structure to collapse. And uh, the war in Croatia produced uh, terrible problems and uh, numerous refugees. We had armed formations, uh, covert transportation of armaments, and, and uh, overt uh, uh, transportations of armaments, etc. It was only then that the Serbs established their crisis staff. And the tasks were given commonly to the defense ministries, etc. However, the SDS uh, crisis staff uh, only function was to inform the Sarajevo headquarters as quickly as possible. On the 14th of February 1992, Karadzic tells them explicitly, you are not uh, an authority in power. You are there to help, to monitor the transportation of weapons, uh, to uh, uh, monitor what's going on, and to let us know if there were any extraordinary situation. Uh, I quoted the example of the British people where Britain, every Briton uh, guards and protects his own country. Public Krivni Stab, formiran u predsjedništvu, kojim je rukovodio Ejup Ganić, isto vreme... The Republican crisis staff established at the presidency and uh, led by uh, Ayub Ganic enabled Alia Izbegovic to circumvent Biljana Plavšić and Nikola Kolovic as representatives of the Serbian people. They didn't have to adopt anything at their meetings. Once it's been decided by the crisis staff, it will be implemented. The SDS crisis staff existed for a short period of time before the war, and once the war broke out, they ceased to exist, and we had municipal crisis staff as state organs. So these staffs were neither the staffs of the SDS of the Serbs, but rather the staffs of the authorities, and they uh, were made up of the Muslims and Croats in the municipalities where these ethnicities lived. What well, the prosecution says here, is that, by quoting a report from Bielina, says that the crisis staff of Bielina informs uh, the SDS headquarters what they decided. However, the prosecution says that this was decided by the SDS main staff. Although it is quite clear what the crisis staff of the municipality, which is a uh, state organ, actually decided. This only expedited the whole process, and there was no need for the assembly to convene. Uh, and these decisions were later on uh, adopted at regular assemblies. Crisis staffs in the Republika Srpska operated openly and publicly. They meticulously recorded every decision that they made, and they subject, uh, submitted them for adoption to their respective assemblies. For example, Kotor Varos had daily meetings 
of the uh, crisis staffs. And this is an illustration of how responsible authority operates, like the one in Kotorvash. But the OTP removed that example. Uh, however, I intend to bring it back just to show you how responsible uh, body of authority operates. Now, this is what they say about their achievements. That is to say, the heads of the SDA and the Patriotic League. Every local commune in municipality had several communes. In all 103 municipalities, the leadership of Patriotic League had their uh, units ranging from a squad to a company. One of their tasks was to procure weapons. If you look back and remember the map that I showed you before, that means that in all these municipalities where the Serbs were living, there were a total of 109, because they, they, they couldn't do this in the Croatian municipalities. However, in all these municipalities where Serbs lived, they had their companies. And their Serbian neighbors were able to see that. And Prosecution thinks that we should be banned from observing and monitoring such activities. On the other hand, they allow them to have this kind of units in their local communes. And they also criticize me for intimidating Serbs without any cause whatsoever. The entire preparations uh, were coordinated by the Patriotic League and its staffs throughout the territory of Bosnia, or Islamic Bosnia, regardless of whether Serbs were living there or whether they were willing to accept what the uh, Patriotic League and the SDA wanted. Mr. Izebegovic met them. He gave his approval. He was their commander in chief. Now, look at this. We, we need to adjourn very soon. Can I have three more minutes, please? Uh, no. One minute. One minute, okay. Uh, Izetbegov Mr. Izetbegovic, by virtue of his position, was uh, the chairman of the National Defense Council of Bosnia Herzegovina. In February, he forms a secret council for the defense of Muslims. So one is Begovic should arrest the other is Begovic. Because these two occupied uh, two different positions, and one of those positions was undermining the, the republic of the other one. And that is what the Serbs couldn't withstand any longer. Thank you. That's for today. Mr. Tigo, I'd like to make sure that we can hear you first thing tomorrow morning. Your Honor, we expect to be filing something today, um, and I uh, can foreshadow that for the court. I believe we'll be, we won't be opposing certification. We will be opposing a stay. Thank you. That will be helpful. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. All rise.